this gauge a little easier to work on uh, or work with I should say yeah let's look at the buttons they're just simple got little needles not little no needles it just works as it's supposed to work so I'm gonna get it rolling you want to check the straps for me certainly and before that uh, pops. Uh, I do like the sound of this one though All right, so before you start strapping this down, um, can you tell me a couple things about this Mark V GTI? Uh, so this car is uh, a very old build. Um, it's just been an ever-growing uh, progress, really. We just keep, the owner just keeps wanting to go further and further and further with it. So this video is gonna be kind of like a part one um, a little bit of a series as we go through the changes with this car again. So the we're going to put it on the dyno just to get a. It's been a long time since I had this car on the dyno. Um, we know roughly what it makes for power, but we're just going to get a baseline because the plans for it now is we're going to do an all-wheel drive conversion in it. So um, we kind of just want to test it with it like this, and then once the all-wheel drive stuff is all done, we're going to put it back on and disconnect the Haldex and actually do a little bit of a test to see um, if there's any real power difference between running it with the Haldex disconnected and it running the angle drive and the dry shaft versus just as a front wheel drive car. So something that probably hasn't been done very often out there, but uh, we're gonna give it a shot. You wanna give us a little breakdown on how this car started, why it first came to you in the first place and maybe some upgrades that it had along the way? Yeah, so this one was, uh, uh, it's a TSI actually, even though it's a Mark V, it uh, has the TSI engine. So it'd be a late model? Late model, 2009 is when they switched to this engine. Um, we originally did a Stage 3 Plus APR kit, which at that time, the kits have changed quite a bit, but came with the GT3071. Um, so the car made good power on the Stage 3 Plus kit. He wanted more power again. I kind of did my own uh, changes on it. We're using most of the APR kit still, but it's utilizing a GTX 3076. So there's a lot more potential for power. Um, the big thing though is fueling becomes a big issue in this car. So was that a direct upgrade through APR that you had purchased through them or was that something that you kind of tried to piece together mm -hmm. and uh, gear up yourself? No, that's, I just did my own thing with it. I basically source kind of what would fit and what we could make work. It does have an external wastegate now as well, which the APR kit would have came internally gated. These engines, the kind of the limit is four to 450 wheel horsepower. 450 is really pushing it actually. Most time, cases you're not gonna get to that kind of horsepower level without doing water meth injection, stuff like that. Typically around the 400 wheel horsepower mark. Is that any, uh, any direct port injected, injected uh, car? The TSI anyways. Um, direct port injection does become a limiting factor uh, in a lot of engines, but that is starting to change a little bit now as more and more companies come out with uh, larger uh, direct port injectors. But so on this one, uh, what I did is I added a fifth injector, which is kind of a common thing on these, but and you can see I have uh, a fifth injector just spraying into the charge pipe, and that um, is a thousand cc injector so that's going to give us about another hundred horsepower on top of what the regular fueling system can provide so it has the upgraded uh, low pressure fuel pump i believe i put the ttrs one in this car it's been so long since i did it it does have the upgraded uh, fuel pump fuel, module yeah fuel pump module as well um, so yeah, it does have all the right things to kind of give us the most we can with the TSI. I'm using a torque bite uh, controller to control the injector that will control water meth injection and stuff like that as well. So I'm using still stock APR software and we're trying to ramp in some more fuel with the uh, torque bite controller. Is that kind of like a piggyback system? Piggyback, yeah. And does that run off the, like does it take uh, control from the ECM or is it its own standalone? No, it's completely, completely standalone. So we've kind of hit the limit of what this is going to do with the APR tune and this. Um, the next rendition, once we get the all-wheel drive done, this guy wants to really step up the horsepower game. 
So uh, we'll be abandoning the APR software most likely in that case because it's going to be really custom set up. Uh, but the first thing is we want to dyno it, see what it's making for power before we switch over to the all-wheel drive setup. Uh, power numbers, I won't talk on where we're going to head for power numbers yet. We're the first part of this kind of project. This rendition of the project is to get the all-wheel drive done. Do you have an idea of where it's sitting for power now, or are we going to yeah, see think the highest, very shortly? <laughs> I think the highest it dynoed um, when we were pushing it a little bit was like around the 450 wheel horsepower mark. I'm not um, going to touch. I'm not going to touch the boost controller or anything. I'm just going to run it the way it is. It should make 400 ish, I think, today. So excellent. We'll see. Uh, so let's talk about drivetrain a little bit. So drivetrain. Does it have stock? Uh, so it what? had an upgraded uh, tranny, well semi-upgraded, it had a um, quaif differential. Uh, but the last time we gave it, the car back to him after some power increase, he went to the track and basically dropped the clutch and grenaded the, the tranny. So that diff has now been sold to fund the new diff for his all-wheel drive setup. So we're not just putting all-wheel drive in it we're upgrading basically everything with the all-wheel drive setup as well. So Plans are to do a gear set as well? Yeah, dog box, so uh, we're just debating on if we're going to do a four or six speed <laughs> gear set on it, but um, he just wants to go to the track and uh, have fun with it. So, so I imagine, uh, I know this has stock axles now, uh, upgrade axles as well in it. Well, you have to with the dog box setup, do you not? Nope, we can do uh, stock axles. Um, We'll see how far the all-wheel drive takes it with the power that we're going to chase with it. And we're not, again, this is just kind of to give us an idea of, you know, where the car sits before we do the all-wheel drive stuff. But um, the, go the goal is to make more power. So um, we'll just kind of push it to its limits and whatever breaks, we'll fix. Uh, what about exhaust system on this? Is that going to be changed? Uh, well, it's going to have to be changed with the all-wheel drive setup, but what's on it currently? A three-inch cat Yeah, back? It's, it's three-inch turbo back. I don't think there's a cat on this car anymore. <laughs> um, and then he wants to do the rear Golf or the rear R32, so dual exit in the center, center. Okay. Uh, which is kind of fitting because we're putting uh, R32 drivetrain and stuff in it. So, um, And it actually did come from a Mark V R32. So the tank and the, uh, all the all-wheel drive stuff is, is actually from one of those cars. So it's going to be a lot of just bolt and uh, plug and play kind of stuff for it. So he still plans on having it fairly streetable, so probably muffler, resonator possibly? or Yeah, open, yeah. I, forget, I forget which exhaust we're going to go with on it. Um, but yeah, it's, just, it's not going to be full-on drag car. It's still a street car that is going to be driven quite a bit at the track. And as we'll probably hear in like, what, 15 minutes or so, or actually probably a few seconds on this, that uh, this is open dump as well. You did a little bit of modification with that? Yeah, so part of switching the turbo, as I mentioned earlier, um, is I put an uh, external wastegate and we have an open dump. So it does get pretty rowdy for, you know, being a little four cylinder. And still has the uh, APR exhaust manifold as well, or is that something? AP that APR in canal exhaust manifold, they're killer manifolds. Um, so, yeah, that thing is still there. Again, if we go to push f for kind of the limp, the power he's chasing, a bunch of that stuff may change. But at this point, we should be able to still get more power out of it with what I got here. So, we're going to try to make this quick. Uh, it is cold it's winter here so it's it's pretty cold out um, I think it's like I don't know it's not that cold today but it's like minus five out right now Celsius for all you Americans yeah. especially since we just got what five to ten centimeters of snow yeah so um, yeah so we're gonna try to just hammer through this see what it makes okay so we're almost ready to go Hopefully you guys can hear me, I got a new camera and I'm not quite sure how the mic is on that thing so we'll find out in this footage here. But we're just about to give a pull on this, car's up to temp and uh, just about ready to go so just waiting on Clayton now. It only made like 
like 16 pounds of boost. Had a bunch of duty cycle to it and it didn't do anything so time to look for leaks today is tomorrow and we are going to uh, just do one pull with the boost controller turned off just to see if it's working at all and if it's not then we're gonna pull the intake off check some lines and put it on the hoist and see if we can find the problem so here we go I would say we probably have a pretty good sized boost leak uh, from the looks of that. So time to do some digging. So it looks like Clayton found uh, a boost tube popped off down there. Uh, this is a twinter cooler setup. So it uses the stock uh, intercooler and then it has another front mount intercooler ahead of it. And uh, the coupler on this side, on the passenger side, is popped off from the looks of it. So we do still need to unstrap it and put it on the hoist to get the belly pan off and stuff to correct that issue. But we're gonna do that now and hopefully get her back on the dyno. All right, so that's what we found there. Doesn't look like it damaged anything really. Looks like it just slipped off. Did. So we got to clean up the oil spray and spray. Uh, get her nice and sticky again. Some stiction in there and clamp her back up. Okay, so we found the problem, as you guys already know. And uh, I got the boost controller off, just going to see what spring pressure does, and then we're going to turn it back on. Hopefully, make some more power. So hopefully this is the last one. Um, this should be it. A couple of things that I don't think we mentioned earlier when Clayton and I were chatting was uh, this is on 91 octane pump gas. There's no additive, no race fuel, nothing like that. So this is exactly how it would be on the street. Also, um, in regards to the engine itself, um, all I've done is a set of IE connecting rods in this thing as well. So all the valve trains stock, the pistons are stock, everything else is stock as it was. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get to it here and uh, she's back up the temp and we're gonna do another rip here. So it did 390 wheel and 294 torque. Um, I actually, during this process, I had turned it down a little bit from where he was driving it. So if I played around with the boost control a little bit more, we could probably get it over the 400 horsepower range on pump gas. Um, but our test is really to kind of, just to see after we put the all-wheel drive in what it'll make. So I'm not gonna touch the boost controller anymore. We're gonna leave it at this and we'll just be able to compare um, when we get back on the dyno. 
And what's next on the chopping block with this? So the next video we should be pulling the drivetrain out and starting to put the all-wheel drive stuff in. So um, it'll get a little, I mean this was fun and all, but um, it'll, the, the real fun stuff is going to start happening now. As I mentioned, this one is kind of going to be a multi-part series as we go through the changes with it. And we do have lots of other stuff coming, so be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, just ask them below.